Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara. Today's video is a Graveyard Project Pan update. This is my first update. The Graveyard Project Pan only takes place over the course of six months and I do these updates every other month. So I will really only have three or four videos for this Graveyard Project Pan, which seems so short because most of my projects are a year or longer. But I have some really different products in this project compared to my other projects. I don't think any of these have been in other projects before. So yeah, it's kind of fun. I've really enjoyed working on these the past couple of months. If you're not familiar with Graveyard Project Pan or even project panning, basically it just means finishing your makeup like panning your product is finishing it and so graveyard project pan is like your older items things with cobwebs and thank you to emily for creating this project i will link her channel down below but yeah let's just get into it if you have watched other graveyard project pan videos you might know that there's actually two streams of products but in an effort to simplify this for myself i'm not dividing products into two streams i'm just trying to finish everything like that's basically my goal <laughs> there are some eyeshadow products that are in this so i don't expect to pan those items but everything else really the goal is to finish them as i mentioned i do have other project pans going on so i'm trying not to make this over complicated if you are interested in other projects i will link my regular project pan here i am only working with eight products in this graveyard project pan so it's a more manageable number but i already said that let's get into it so i've rambled on enough let's start with the first product so i do have one empty today which is very exciting you could probably predict this if you watched my last project pan video where i introduced all of the items because there was a casualty basically what happened is i had this eyeliner and while showing it on camera it broke and so after that i was really only able to use it i don't know maybe like four or five times after that so it probably only lasted a week or two after filming that video so that is the covergirl brown eyeliner perfect point plus i will pop up a picture right here i tried digging through my bag of makeup empties for the year to try to find it and I just couldn't because I accumulate all of my products. I, I keep them and there's a lot of stuff in there so far. So you just have to trust me on this. I finished that product and I'm not that surprised because even before I had broken it, there wasn't that much product left. So I knew it would be out soon, but I'm really pleased to already have one empty at the very first update today. So I will be rolling one new product in because it is you know, fairly early on in this project and uh, I don't wanna be working on just seven items. I want it to be eight. So that is the most exciting thing, but I did make a lot of progress on the other items as well. <laughs> right as I'm about to start filming. <laughs> for Taylor, by the way. Oh my god. My concert is at the beginning of August. It's so soon. Have any of you guys been to the Eras tour? I am like stressed about the concert. I don't know why I keep having like stress dreams about it. I think because it's like such a big deal to me that I'm like worried something will go wrong. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> back to the topic at hand this product unfortunately i don't have very positive news about it i think everything else i have better things to report than this one but this is the mac fluid line dirty blonde brow gel cream i think you can see a little bit of progress compared to last time i don't think i took progress pictures for whatever reason for this project usually i do so i don't know what was going on but I think there's a little bit of progress, but I really only reached for this a couple of times. And that is mostly because of my hair. I tinted it red about a month ago. Yeah, I tinted it red a month ago. And so I've been using kind of like reddish brow product. And this is like quite a dark color. I don't know if you can tell, I don't do it like super obviously, but I, I like the way it looks. And so I have not been reaching for my regular brow products at all. So that's gonna be difficult for the next little while because my hair is probably gonna stay like this and I'm not really going to want to use like a brown eyebrow color. So maybe I should switch this one out too. 
I will have to decide that. But yeah, a couple of times, that's really all I reached for it. The next one is this lipstick. I, I wanna track this. I wish I had tracked it last time because I got some really good use on it, this one in particular, and <laughs> I don't have visible evidence. But these two, I wasn't sure if I would roll in this red one. This is the little NARS lip duo. That was the birthday gift a couple of years ago in the shades Rakujian and Cruella. So now they are pretty much even. The nude shade is a little, tiny bit taller, but before it was actually quite a big difference. So I know that I've used up a lot of this in the last couple months. I have actually used it as a blush and as a lip product. This is what I'm wearing today on top of a sort of darker nude NYX lip liner. I don't like the scent. They smell different. I think the red one smells better than the nude one. And I'm not sure if this is the intended smell. <laughs> it kind of gives me weird vibes. So for that reason, I'm kind of trying to get it out, but I do really like the color on my lips and as a blush. Okay, I took the caps off and I marked them down. And I think the nude shade is actually a tiny bit smaller than the red shade. And I think that will continue to be the case. I think I will use the nude one up a lot faster than the red one, just based on the last two months. I don't know if I use this at all. Maybe I used it as blush once, but I have another red lip product that I'm using as a blush right now. And they're not like the exact same shade, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're both red. So I'm generally reaching for the other one more, but I'm going to encourage myself to try to use both of these as blushes and as lip products because these past two months have been very effective. I think that I've used this one up a ton. I actually don't know like how deep it goes, you know, how some products, like it might go to sort of the ridge of the pink there. It might go halfway through the black. It might go all the way down. Like I actually don't know how much product is left in these. So we'll have to see how much can I get done by November? I don't know. The next one is yet another blush, an actual blush this time, a cream blush. And again, I don't know why I didn't track this. I think the reason was because I didn't have much confidence in my abilities <laughs> in how quickly I would get through them. But this is the NYX Stick Blush in T-Rose. And before I put it in the project, this I was not a huge fan of it. I was considering decluttering it. It was just way too pink for me. And now I, love it. I am loving cream blush right now. And the fact that this is one of the cream blushes that I'm using, one of the only cream blushes I'm using right now that is actually cream blush and not a lipstick, the formula is great. So it looks very pink there, but I'm able to blend it out to sort of the shade that I like and it's not over the top. So I will just show you like where it is in there now and hopefully I can pair that to last time, but I will track it today because I made progress on it and I wanna be able to see that for next time. So that's how much is left there. I don't like this as a lip product because it is a little bit too pinky for me, but as a blush, it blends out really nicely. So that line there is where we were at. And yeah, I'm excited to see if I still like using this the next month or so, cause you know, it's still summer at least until the fall and then we'll see if this cream blush phase is just a phase or I like it year round. Okay, next up we've got one disappointing product and then one I think very exciting product. This next one is the ColourPop eyeshadow in Paradox and last time you saw me begging to keep this in and basically saying I'm going to use it. I swear it's not time to declutter it. I'm not ready. Look how nice it is. This is such a pretty shade. And have I used it since that video? Mm -mm. No, I have not touched it. Now I could give you excuses for this and there actually are some. One is that I got a new eyeshadow palette a month ago and I have basically touched nothing else since then. The other excuse is that I rolled my Naked Heat palette into this graveyard project pan, which we'll get to afterwards. And so I was trying to focus on that. And so this got shoved by the wayside, but it's, it's one shade. Like I could have incorporated this with other looks. It actually would go really nicely with the new palette that I got. So ask me why I didn't combine them, I don't know. I think that this should get one more chance and then next time 
Next update, it's probably time to declutter it. If I do end up using it a lot more in the next month or two, then I'll wait until the end of the year to declutter it. But as I've said before, it's really soon time for this one to go because it is so dried up. And I am not proving that it is worth keeping if I'm just not using it. Sorry to not have a better update about this ColourPop eyeshadow, which really should not even still be in my collection. I know, I know that. Let's move on to happier news. If this next product disappoints me, I'm gonna be so sad because I wanted to check how much I had used of it before I started filming, but I was like, no, I wanna save my reaction for on camera. So what if my reaction is like disappointment? Let's see. This is the Urban Decay Eyeliner and it is double-ended. I don't really use the purple side because I don't like purple eyeliner. It's kind of hard to tell. Do we have another one here? No. So basically this silver part is the exact middle. So it looks like half of it is silver and half of it is purple, but actually what happened is I used up this entire side of the black shade and I have not used up this side of the purple shade and this silver bit is the middle bit but I've used it up entirely. And I actually did try to sharpen it, like sharpen the silver bit to see if there was more product in there. And I think that there is, but you can't sharpen it. Like the silver is metal, it's, it's not just the color. So this is as much I can use. I can probably, you know, use up until it's like much lower down. You know what I mean? Like it's not pointy because I can't sharpen it more, but I can probably use it to smudge things out a little bit longer but i'm really happy because this is this is almost an empty and let's see if i can see how much i've used up it's tricky because i don't know if i measured it with the caps on last time so here's where it was last time and here is where it is this time wow that is so much for an eyeliner in two months like I would expect that to be possible for a lip product because I can use lip product multiple times a day, like all the time. But an eyeliner, I am not reaching for every time I do makeup and I'm only reaching for it when I do do my makeup. You know, I'm not having like a naked face plus eyeliner. <laughs> so that is pretty impressive. I don't even know how I used it up, but I was trying to reach for this as much as possible over my other eyeliners. So I'm really happy with that. And it's not quite an empty as you can see, but it probably will be like next time. It is challenging to use it like this because it's not pointy. I like my eyeliner to be quite precise and that is difficult when you have a very dull <laughs> pencil and you can't sharpen it. So today I basically just like put a little on the lash line and then I used another like a brown eyeliner to extend that line or you could use like a a brush like a very thin brush to do that so i'm sure i'll be able to finish it for next time that is the goal but i'm very happy about that because for a while i was switching between these urban decay liners because i have four of them because i really like them but i didn't want to finish any one of them which is just dumb like if i have one that's almost finished why am i not going to finish that one why am i going to then switch to a different one just so that i can keep four that is what my mentality used to be like oh i'm looking at the wrong document here okay the next one, as I mentioned before, is the Naked Heat Urban Decay Eyeshadow Palette. I didn't have specific goals around this. I wasn't trying to hit pan on any of them or use each shade five times or one single shade 20 times or anything. I just wanted to get more use out of it. And I actually have been quite successful in that regard. I used it a lot more the first month before I got the new palette. Since I've had that new palette, of course, that has been my main focus. It's what I'm wearing today. It is the palette from ColourPop that Shauna decluttered to me, but I have still been using this on occasion, especially for the eyebrows. This is actually what I've been reaching for for my brows. I use a combination of these two shades usually, and I think you can see because I sort of stuck my little brow brush in there. And then I also like to use this shade quite a bit because I don't have anything else like that and you can see how much more progress there has been on that shadow compared to the other one. But I did get a lot of use out of this in the first month, which I'm really happy about. I am going to keep this in my project pan, I think for the first month, my graveyard project pan, that's what I mean when I say that. But there is another palette that I'm thinking about decluttering. So I'm gonna have to rotate that in 
at some point. Why don't I just do that today? Is that too many palettes to have out? That might be a good idea, but I might also rotate that in for the next update. I'm gonna have to think about that. But overall, I'm really happy with my use of this and I'm really glad that I rolled it into the Graveyard Project Pan. It's not as old as some of these other products. This, I believe I got in the summer of 2018. The first time I used it was the Reputation <laughs> concert here in Toronto when I saw Taylor, but I still do love it. I just, for whatever reason, I don't reach for it that much. I think it's still like very special to me. And then the very last product that I had last time in my graveyard project pan is this lipstick which i have actually been using as a blush and i have only been using this as a blush i don't think i reached for it on the lips at all in the past two months but i've really enjoyed using it as a blush and ugh, i wish i had tracked this also because i think it was a lot higher i can probably find like a picture or a video screenshot or something but i think this is a lot smaller than it was last time because I've been really enjoying it. And I think I have been surprised that I like this as a blush because I don't love it as a lipstick. I guess that's just something I've learned kind of through this project pan that like what I like on the lips isn't necessarily the same as what I like on the cheeks. Like I said before with this, this blush does not work for me on the lips, it's way too pink. And this lipstick doesn't work for me on the lips because it's too blue. <laughs> does that make sense? Like you don't really blend out products on your lips or at least i don't i just apply them and then i blot but you blend them out on your cheeks and so you get a kind of a really different color than when you first applied it and to me that's a really nice nude slightly darker more like taupe shade which i really like on the cheeks but not on the lips so i have marked off how much i have left but i think i've done really good progress on this lip product and now I know I don't need to wear it on my lips because I don't like that look and I don't reach for it that way. So very pleased about my progress on this. I feel like all of the things that I thought I was gonna get a lot of use out of, I didn't and all the things that I didn't think I would get a lot of use out of, I did. So little surprise there. But those are all the products that I had rolled in last time. As I mentioned though, because we've got a couple that are removed this time, I gotta roll some new stuff in but we have one. I didn't count this red one in the eight and I don't know if I should because I really don't know if I'm gonna reach for this. I think I will remove it from the Graveyard Project Pan even though it was never really in in the first place. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I wanna add two more in. So let me go grab those. So neither of these products are actually makeup, which I realized last time that I didn't include any non-makeup products. And usually in Project Pans, I have like one thing that's not makeup. But this first one is the Garnier Body Ultimate Beauty Oil Skin Perfector. Now I don't like any kind of oil. <laughs> I don't particularly like oil in my food. I don't like hair oils. I don't like skin oils. I don't like body oils. I'm just a very oily person to begin with and I do not need to enhance that. But nonetheless, I have this. I think maybe my mom gave it to me and I've had it for so long that like, I feel like it's changed. I don't even know if oils can expire, but I'm not entirely sure that this is the same as it was when I first got it. It shows up, I guess I should show you on the back of my hand. So this is what it looks like. I didn't rub it in, but just like sprayed on my hand. It does like absorb, you know, if I were to go like that, it does absorb, but I don't like the feeling because <laughs> I already feel like an oily person. You know what I mean? And I also don't like the smell. I think it's maybe changed. I, I couldn't tell you how long I've had this, but definitely more than five years. And <sighs> I dislike this one so much that it has me wishing for that body shop moisturizer I I just finished. But the issue is that like, I don't think I can pass this on because it doesn't smell good. And I also, it's not like I can like pour it down the drain or something because it's like an oil, you know? So I would just have to dump this in the trash and I don't feel good about doing that. So the least I can do is put a little bit of effort into using this up, even if it's, I mean, you can tell there's so much left like I barely use anything up at least if I can get like a third of it gone then that is something and I'll feel a little bit less guilty 
but oh man, do I ever dislike this. Everything else here is so much better than this. This is the only thing that I feel like I'm actively gonna be hate panning because I, I don't do that anymore, which is good. <sighs> but sometimes I just feel like I got it, you know? And the final product is, this is not a hate pan, but this is a challenging pan. This is from Pacifica. It is the Rose Flower Hydro Mist, Refuse to Obey Time. Now it's kind of unclear what this is from the title, but when you read the directions, it says hold eight to 10 inches from face, close eyes and spray in downward motions three times to cover entire face, let dry. Now I have been so confused about this product that I have gone out and watched other people tutorials or reviews about this product to try to figure out what I'm doing wrong and how I should be using it. Cause look what happens when I spray this. I'm not gonna spray it on my face. I'll spray it at my hand. Watch this. Did you see that? It's a, it's a straight line. It is a, it is a straight stream. Picture a water gun. It does smell pretty lovely, but picture a water gun. It's just going straight. This is not a relaxing all over face mist. I think there might be something wrong with this because I have, when I have watched those videos of other people using it, it doesn't look like that. So <laughs> what, is there something I can do about this? I don't know. I think this is defective because in those videos that I've watched from other people, no one's pump looks like that. They all deliver a nice fine mist, but there, if I try to spray this on my face, like my eye is going to have serious consequences. You know, it's, I'm not, I'm not gonna explain why it's a bad idea to spray this on my face. I have thought about using a different sprayer instead, but I, the ones that I have had recently, you know, like when I finish other products, they haven't been the right size. Like this is a very particular size. If you look here, that's not the right size. My Urban Decay setting spray, that's not the right size. So I'm thinking maybe of like spraying this on my pillow before I go to bed at night. I know some people do that. They have like a nighttime perfume and it like relaxes them. But again, sort of similar problem. If I spray this on my pillow, it's just gonna be like one spot that's very wet. <laughs> So what do you guys think? I am soliciting your thoughts and ideas because I really don't know how to use this up. Also, this was a present from my mom and when she gave it to me in the bag, like half of it had spilled out. And since then I've tried to use it in other ways, which hasn't really been successful, but at this point there's like a quarter left despite not actually getting any use out of it. So it's been a pretty useless product <laughs> thus far. But that is it. Those are the eight products that I am working on in this year's graveyard project pan. What do you think? Will I be able to finish some of these by the end of the year? Will I have finished any of them by next time? I'm gonna say that this Urban Decay liner will be finished by next time. The other ones, probably not, but hopefully by November. So thank you for watching and let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. So I am going to discuss an audiobook that I read recently because I honestly didn't like it very much, but it is being turned into a movie that's coming out in the fall. So I feel like that's something interesting. This book is called Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI by David Gran. This was way too long. I think it was like 12 or 13 hours on audio. So this is only 359 pages, but it felt way longer than that. I gave it two stars. Oh, I didn't even give a review. Oh, it was just so tedious. At about the third mark, I was like, I'm not gonna finish this. Like, it's just not holding my attention whatsoever. The first bit of it was pretty exciting. And then the end bit, but the middle, like third, probably more than a third was so dull. It is an interesting story, but I just didn't think that the way it was told was very well. So it's basically about, I'll just read you this a little bit. In the 1920s, the richest people per capita in the world were members of the Osage Indian nation in Oklahoma. After oil was discovered beneath their land, the Osage rode in chauffeured automobiles, built mansions and sent their children off to study in Europe. But then they start being killed off. And it's a question of who is killing people. Obviously it's to try to get their money, but this is tens of people are murdered and it turns into a huge investigation that at first, you know, the police is not really taking seriously and it eventually does lead to the creation of the FBI. Now, 
Martin Scorsese is directing the film and it's got uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro and obviously indigenous people are playing the roles of the Osage nation but I don't know I'm a little bit wary that this story can be told by a white man and the book was written by a white man also which you know, authorship. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I do think I probably would have enjoyed it better and it would have been better overall if it was actually written from the perspective of someone in the nation. I think the author did a good job with, you know, fact checking and being respectful, but I just don't necessarily feel like it was his story to tell. And I don't think that that should be a hot take <laughs> in this day and age. Why is Martin Scorsese making the film? I don't know, but it's got rave reviews. I probably will see it and I hope it is better than the book because <laughs> I didn't love the book, but that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll talk to you next week.